Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Probability Measure. Currently I have around 10 videos that deal with a lot of the theory, theorems, and etc. And I always get knocked for not having enough examples. So I'm going to go back and put 20 to 30 videos of examples sprinkled within this measure theoretic playlist. And this is the first one. And so here we're going to do two examples with the limit supremum and the limit infimum. So example one, we're going to let an be an interior of a circle with radius one and centered at this point. And we want to find the limit supremum of an and the limit infimum of an. Now I really like this example for a couple reasons. One, if we look at the definition of limit supremum of a set, it's usually defined in terms of intersections of unions of sets, right? And the first two videos I put out on sort of an introductory to limit supremum and limit infimum, we primarily work with this, this uh, setting. But I also mentioned that this is an equivalent definition where, you know, that Xn is in An infinite many for infinite many N. And in this example, I actually think it's easier to think about it like this in, in terms of these, these more, these definitions instead of union, intersection, etc. And I'll explain that in a minute. So the limit and femum is usually union of intersections of the sets. But here, you know, X has to eventually be in all of the sets for some large N. So another way to think about it is for all but finitely many in. So then, so this is an example. So remember that it's a radius of one and centered at this point. So when n is one, this is minus one. When n is two, this is one half. When n is three, this is negative one half. So the circles look like this. So first one's centered at minus one, and then at half, and then minus a half. And so these circles are, are doing this until they get down to, you know, in limit centered at zero, zero. And it's, and it's this. But they'll always forever be slightly back and forth like this, you know, as n goes to infinity. So the limit in FEMA, remember, so we want all the x's, so that, you know, in the set, that xn is in a n for all but finitely many n. So another way to think is that is that x is eventually in every set. And since we're it's a we're looking at a you know sort of a dotted circle here. Well it's it yeah it's not dotted it's a circle but I made it dotted just because it I think it helps <laughs> the picture wasn't quite as cl cluttered. So this is a solid circle each time. But for every n, you know, it's it's actually just on this side of the 1 and minus 1, and then the next one, it's on just on this side, just on that side. And so the only points that eventually get into this limit are these. It's 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 all x and y such that x squared plus y squared is less than 1. So it's on the interior of this circle. And that's the limit in FEMA, right? Because every other, you know, you know, points not inside of one and minus one, of course, will never, you know, eventually be in it. So it has to be in here, but um, it's only the interior of that circle that is eventually in for every a n. Okay. So now if we look at the limit supremum that X is, is in infinitely many of these ANs. So, as we go back and forth, every N, so one N, we're here, the next N, we're there, here, 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 here. So, and that goes on for infinity. So actually, the this point here is in infinitely many of those, right? Because we always are just going back and forth in the same way here. And actually, the same way on the whole boundary except for 0, minus 1, and 0, 1, right? Because the only way to be on that point is if the, the circle was exactly 
on you know at zero and with a radius one that point is actually never in the circle right because the circle if it's slightly this way that exact point never makes a circle and then the next end we're over here so that point never quite makes that circle so the limit supremum of a n is this it's all the x and y such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to one so that's the whole circle but these two dots never make it into the circle infinitely many times actually never and so we have to subtract out this bottom point and the bottom and the top point and so this is it this is the limit and femum and limit and uh, supremum of of these a n's now Example two, we're going to let xn be a sequence of real numbers and let an be the set or the interval from minus infinity to xn. Notice it's, it's not including that point. So it's an open interval. So what is the connection between the limit supremum of xn, which is a sequence, and the limit supremum of an, a set? <clears throat> so now as a reminder, the limit supremum of xn equals x. So actually we assume that. I added this later. We have to assume that it equals some point x. And so that means that for any epsilon greater than zero, there are infinitely many of these uh, sequences in this open interval. <clears throat> so it can be arbitrarily close. <clears throat> and there's three, I think, you know, examples that illustrate this. So if we have a sequence that goes up and down and then eventually tames down, and infinitely many of these sequences touch that line, that says that that's a limit supremum, right? It's the upper bound eventually. It's the infinitely many touch that line. So it's the infinitely many within that interval. We have a decreasing sequence. So Xn decreases, you know, never touches Xn. But ultimately, you know, for some epsilon greater than zero, all infinitely many points will be within that small interval. So that says that X would be a limit point, limit supremum of this sequence. In the same way for an increasing sequence, that X would be the limit supremum because ultimately there's going to be infinitely many of those sequences within that small interval. Okay, so that was background. So now let's let, oh, and remember we're assuming that the limit supremum of that sequence is equal to x. <clears throat> so let, let's let y be in the limit supremum of a n. So that means that y is less than a n for infinitely many n. So thus, y has to be less than or equal to x. Now, the equal to part it really depends upon which setting we're in that we have to include that equal to there. And I'll let you do that mental math to verify that that equal sign has to be there. So that means that y is in this interval. So now let's let, right, so the limit supremum of x in is x. And if y is in the limit supremum of a n, that means y has to be in this interval. Okay, So that actually means the limit supremum is a subset of this interval. Now let's let y be in this interval, the open interval. So then y is less than x n for infinitely many n. So that means y is in the limit supremum of a n. So thus what we've just shown is that the limit supremum it's sort of, it, it's between these two. Like, this is a subset of that. That's what we just showed. And then Lima Supremum is a subset of this. And it actually, so therefore, if the limit supremum of Xn is X, then the limit supremum of An is either this interval or this interval. And that's what we wanted to show. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, stay tuned for... 20 to 30 more examples in probability measure. Hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.